Uh, my wife and I bought the bookstore about six years ago. We had decided that because we didn't have any kids, that uh, we wanted to do something we liked doing rather than doing something that was making a living for us. Although this store does make a living for us. Uh, so uh, about six years ago, we had that discussion and it just so happened that that weekend, my wife saw in the paper this bookstore for sale. And you know, we'd always talked about, oh, it'd be great to own a bookstore. Wouldn't it be great to own a bookstore, you know? And, uh, and I knew this bookstore because I had shopped here. I mean, not a lot, but I knew it. So we came over and we talked to the owners and they explained everything, what they had. And you know, it's a combination of collectible books, rare books, yeah. out of print books, no. and just used books. So it's a niche market. So we were like, well, you know, we're not going to be competing with the big box stores. That's a good thing. The store's been around for 20 years. It's Atlanta Vintage Books, and we were buying it lock, stock, and barrel. I mean, fully stocked, or so we thought. <laughs> but um, so, you know, the price was right. It was something we could do, and we decided, you know what, we're doing it. If we don't, we'll regret it for the rest of our lives. And we have not regretted one minute. Thank you. Come back and see us. Yeah, I'll come back. There's a, okay. Excellent. Well, great. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's you know, it's been tough, the beginning, but I, I have a number of old sayings, but one, one saying that I use is, hey, as long as I stay open, or the longer I stay open, the longer I stay open. <laughs> um, I realized that uh, downstairs you guys had a huge number of this aisle of, like, magazines. Yes. Is that... Do you guys also sell magazines? That's what that's part of what we call yeah. ephemera, right? Um, old magazines, uh, photographs, postcards, old letters, old deeds, uh, just old ads, you know, for magazines. Uh, <clears throat> and, and we sell that to artists and people who are looking for a creative boost. Uh, and so they'll go downstairs and dig through there and find something that strikes their fancy and then come upstairs and, you know, make a deal with us yeah. price-wise. Now the magazines were here when we bought the store. And, and the Life magazines go back all the way to when it first started. We have the first magazine ever printed by Life. Wow. First, first issue. Wow. Uh, and it's got a picture on the front of the Hoover Dam taken by Margaret uh, Bork White. But yeah, it's been here. Um, tw it'll be 25 years next year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time, yeah. Right. He did keep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how. Well, you know, interestingly enough, our sales have gone up every year since we've owned the store. And uh, we happened to buy it. Of course, a year later, the economy goes into the tank, right? So we, we ran a sale, a 15% off sale for two years straight, right? Um, it's all about rebuilding the customer base. Um, the place has been here for so long that I think it's one of those things where because it's been here so long, the people who used to shop here, they may, might have moved or died, you know, or, or 
Uh, and so the new people in town don't know about it, right? There's not a lot of money for advertising. Yeah. So it's all about rebuilding the customer base. And we actually do more business in the store than we do online. I thought so. I just put them out. We'll give you, they're all good titles, so we'll give you 50 cents. Okay. Okay. Um, so. so, you need some paper, Dan? I got it. You got it? We have two employees, and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like cheers without the beer. It's a place for people to come to yeah. and, and hang out, Experience. shoot the breeze, you know. That woman that you saw earlier, Benita. I mean, she's shopped here for 20 years. People that come in here, truly, I mean, we get a lot of repeat customers because they just, most people do love this store, you know. And then can't forget the cats, too. Mm -hmm. you mentioned that. We do have the five cats, and, and we got a lot of people that are really interested in, in the lives of the cats that we have, you know. They, they are, they're fascinating. How the cats do it, and they come in and they pet the cats and all that other stuff. It's incredible. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very open, comfortable environment. I won't say we planned it. <laughs> we didn't plan on having five cats. Um, a good friend of ours had a cat that she needed to get a home for. She had found the cat in the engine compartment of her husband's car, right? And so she adopted him. Now, she's an old friend of ours, but her cat and her dog didn't get along with this new cat. So she was like, I got to find a place. So she brought us Boo, right? So he was the first one. And then with the crowd out here, and there were there's maybe 15 total between the front and the back, but there's been double that amount, right? But it's, it's we've had some, we've gotten 25 cats adopted over six years. Wow. Did you come here as a customer before? Or? Yeah, actually, it was, yeah, I came here for a couple of years. I was actually coming in here and just, you know, hanging out, you know, just hanging out and talking to Bob and all that. And they go, you're not supposed to be here. You're Where's supposed they? to be at ra in radiology. <laughs> oh. I said, where's radiology? And they were like, mm -hmm. well, it's really rich. And I'm like, the way I went, it was a blank. It was a, uh, and so I turned around and I walked back into the original place. And the guy looks up at me and he's like, what happened? And I'm like, I went to Vascula. They told me it wasn't supposed to be there. I was supposed to be in radiology. I went to radiology. They told me I wasn't supposed to be there. I was supposed to be somewhere else. No. And he goes, No. Let me look at this. Uh, no. He's, he's on the phone. Like, don't tell me that was where you're supposed to be. That office. was where I was supposed to be. Office. I hope they got on their knees and begged for your forgiveness. He was very sorry. Oh. He was very sorry. Uh, no. So you know they did the ultrasound. And I said, oh, so this is like when they the pregnant the pregnancy thing. Right? You know, little little baby kitten said, so in there. So you see a little baby the cat. Kitten, right? So the, Bob was telling me that a big part of the store is like customer connection. Right. You're part of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, talking to people, they interaction and all that people got ideas and they you know they sound them out with us and we talk to them you know I think the people working at the store are the key uh, friendly knowledgeable um, make you feel welcome um, pay attention to you and because buying a book is not like buying a can of beans at the grocery store and I really think that, that Borders and, and Barnes and & Noble, the big box stores, it's a natural function of business. The bigger you get to try to, to, to mass produce things and, and simplify things. It's about um, you know, helping them find what it is they're looking for and they may not even know. Um, it's kind of a, a literary matchmakers. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, we kind of consider ourselves literary matchmakers, mm -hmm. and that's fun when you can make a connection for someone, and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a, a $2,000 book. It can be a $2 book or a $1 book, and just to see their excitement. And so essentially going to one of those bookstores was like buying a can of beans, you know?
pull it off the shelf, they scan it, you know, they don't, the clerks don't know anything about the book, right? And, so and you connect with your customers. Connect with your customers. A book in German, published by the German army in 1941, oh, with a hand-drawn map. And the title of the book is called Mit uns in Ost, right? With us in the East. And it was about the invasion of Russia by the Germans. And it shows a beautifully hand drawn map. You know, in 1941, you know, they were on top of the world. Were they? Is from 1631. That is wow. so crazy. So are they missing that, <laughs> that book in the. Probably not. You know. <laughs> it's been rebound. Right. Okay. I'm amazed it just looks so oh, precise. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, back in the parlor is another two big rooms that are art, entertainment, architecture, architecture and um, music bubble. Uh, this half we have pitch and children's and then we have modern class kind of modern books against the wall. Mm -hmm. In that corner you're gonna find um, religion and metaphysics and litter of art. That's where our stairs are back in the middle so, too. Down the stairs, two dollar quarter back, four dollar back. But I do think then another um, probably uh, sixteen different areas anywhere um, from um, I, Medical, would, business, how much is psychology, gardening, pets, uh, technology. Yeah, just more of that stuff. So. And then you might just say a classic room. I used to take a friend here for about a year uh, who had um, <clears throat> a brain tumor, and uh, but he, I used to drive him around a lot. He loved bookstores, so I used to, I, I took him here, and uh, he kind of found a home here, and before long I was employed here. So. Oh, okay. So you were a customer here before you yeah. worked here? Oh, okay. Um, How's it like working here? Like, is it? It's probably one of. Um, I love working here. Um, Bob and Jan are so good to, to work for. Um, very laid back, but you always find things here that you never knew were here. When Queen Mary was uh, burning everyone at the stake who wouldn't convert to Catholicism, John Calvin and a number of other a number of his friends took off out of England and went to Geneva, Switzerland, and they translated the Bible out of Greek and Hebrew. Wow. And this is considered the first, if not one of the first, if not the first study Bible, because you see it has commentary. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if John, John is like, kind of shy about being so what is this from? I don't sure what 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 is this? I'm sorry, it's stolen from the. Uh, it's stolen from the Vatican Library. It's not really stolen from the Vatican Library. Uh, Even they have book sales. Yeah, they had yeah the library <laughs> the Vatican Library had a book sale and uh, this was for sale. <laughs> <laughs> what makes us different? Um, it really is. We feel a sense of community. Um, you know, everyone who comes in. You know, whether they're from another state or another country or just local, you know, they become, um, you know, we kind of create stories with them. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they still follow us uh, for a long time. And, um, you know, you're never sure who's going to walk in through the door, but it's always, uh, uh, it's always an interesting surprise. <laughs> <laughs> an uncle of mine bought a boat at an auction. He lives down in <laughs> Richmond Hill. You learn a lot? <laughs> We uh, we tinkered around with it for two days, and we thought we had it seaworthy. And it had two engines on it, you know. So we thought, you know, we'll go out to sea. You know, it was like five in the afternoon. We'll go out to sea, you know, for a few miles and just try it out. Mm -hmm. Well, we got out there a few miles, you know. We we, we could still see land, uh -huh. you know, but we were out there, and uh, uh, the boat the both engines quit. And so, oh my goodness, you know, so we thought, what's going on? So we tinkered and tinkered and tinkered with it. And finally, about sundown, we got one of the engines going. And, <laughs> and, <night> long. <laughs> and then we got into the marsh. And the marsh down there, you know, this, this is about 20 miles south of Savannah, Richmond Hill, mm -hmm. and it's that, that marshland. And we got lost in there, mm -hmm. in the dark. I mean, you could easily get, uh, that's why the pirates used to hide in there, because there's mm -hmm. a thousand inlets, <laughs> and only one of them, you know, is back to the marina. Uh. Well, we got lost. And uh, 
So after uh, running aground a couple times. Well, how did you, when you ran aground, how, how did you get it back? Did you have to hop out? Well, we had to wait for the tide to come in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But what was funny, with the one person, who, with this one cousin of mine who knew the way, was had about a beer too many. Oh, no. But a place like this is, is it's a, it has a, a character to it, you know, a personality, you know, and and a comfort, you know, that you you don't get in in, in bookstores that are new bookstores or even a lot of uh, quote unquote used bookstores. Um, it's just a it's a very living place. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I I used to be a hospice chaplain. I uh, had a full time kind of uh, job and. Um, Working here, though, is probably one of the most uh, I would choose coming here anytime. I live just around the corner, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's sort of one of your dream jobs to, mm -hmm. to work in a, an independent bookstore like this. Mm -hmm. Well, reading information, you know, reading is knowledge, and it expands your mind. You know, you 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 learn more stuff than you ever could any any other way you know and, and books in itself is a tactic thing tactical thing where you're actually you're feeling you know these books and and, and, and you know especially like books that have been signed by authors for example like James Joyce this is a book that actually James Joyce had actually touched you know and you're touching this book that James Joyce touched you know I mean, you go to a museum, you can't touch the stuff in the museum, even though, you know, so, I mean, it's something different, and, and it's just a, it's a fun, fun thing, you know, to realize that, I mean, there's a whole world of, of you know, stuff in there. Whatever you want to know is in a book somewhere, you know, and hopefully we have it so that you can, you know, enjoy it. You feel like you're, uh, you know, they're, they're paying for the book, but they're always, they're always going to be paying less than that they go to Borders or Barnes & Noble or anywhere else. I mean, unless you're buying a collectible book and then you're going to pay, you know, the collectible price. Yeah. But, but if you come to the store and buy a hardcover book, it's going to it's be a, a lot cheaper than if you buy it, you know. You probably can't find it anywhere else. And, and that's the thing. And so I've always read books and I came here primarily because, well, I had some books I had that I wanted to sell and I brought them over, and and then I just started. It was so it's night. It was nice here that I just just kept coming, you know, you know. And then eventually, because I was unemployed at the time, and I needed a job, and it, the job opened up, so I was able to take that job, which I which is a very this has been best job I've ever had, by far, best job I've ever had. <laughs>